first glimpse English audiences ever had of the cinema, more or less as it is today. It was the Lumiere program that was shown in London in 1896. You'd think we'd know the basic facts about the history of the cinema. After all, it only happened 70 years ago. Or well, we don't. We don't know who did the first close-up or the first trick shot. We don't really know who began the idea of simple storytelling or who did the first color film. Come to that, we don't even know for sure exactly who invented it. As a result of this, film historians have tended to lump all these experiments on one man, the great American director, D.W. Griffith. But in 1947, a French film historian, Georges Sadoul, on a holiday visit to Brighton, met an old projectionist, Edward Austin, who described how story, comedy, and trick films were made and shown in Brighton in the late 90s, long before Griffith made his first film in 1907. Intrigued by Sadoul's account of these forgotten filmmakers, I wanted to meet the people who knew them, and above all, to find out if any of the films survived. In the Science Museum, there were a few pieces of their apparatus. But in Hove, I met a veteran aviator, Graham Head, who'd been a passionate film collector since the age of 10. He has literally tons of it. Not only had he preserved the bits of the Brighton films, he was able to take me on a tour of the streets of Hove to see the sites of the original studios. In one case, even though newer factory buildings have since sprung up, the outline of the old laboratory and studios, as they were in 1902, can still be seen. It was here that they made their equipment, shot their films, developed and printed them. And so I came to learn of two respectable and rather high-minded late Victorian gentlemen who had turned to filmmaking as early as 1896. Sir James Williamson, chemist of 86 Church Road, Hove. And another local resident, George Albert Smith, portrait photographer and lantern lecturer from Hove, went up one Saturday evening and saw at the Empire Leicester Square the Lumiere program. He liked it so much that on the way home he decided that he too must make films. On the following Monday he was in touch with a local engineer, Alfred Darling, and two months afterwards he had his own movie camera. And like the Lumieres, the first experiment he made was to record the workers leaving a factory. <laughs> of promoting scientific and educational films to show at lantern lectures, it was always the comedies that sold. Around 1898, he built his own studio, where he filmed against painted backcloths and made films like A Kiss in the Tunnel, which combined actuality tracking shots with studio incidents which feature Mr. Smith himself. He died in 1959. I went down to Hove to see Mr. Smith in search of more facts and more films. He met us at the front door, showed us inside the house with his records, his catch books, and on a very battered old tape recorder, we documented a few reminiscences. I was making black and white pictures in 1897. What sort of subject did you begin with? Natural subjects like rough seas and uh, things of that sort, you know. And then I got on to comedies. And uh, in fact, I, I rather kept to comedies. I had a, a pretty good long list of all sorts of things, of gymnastics. You know, you used, used to think of that. You know, think of that before you got up in the morning, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, saw it up in your mind, or made a note of it, and then developed it when the time came to it. I did the story of Cinderella in 75 seconds. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, yes. so where are we now? This is the Ramswell Gardens Hole. And that very spot is where Mr. Smith started his little cinema experimental theatre. Those two trees practically mark the spot. I remember the spot well because I came in as a lad and couldn't get as near as I should like to because I was told to keep out. In those days, from, in those days, St. Answell was a private company and you paid sixpence to go in that door to, and came in here. Can you remember what the studio actually looked like in those days? Yes, it, it looked like a little wooden barn and the doors opened and they performed, or what did their little thing, a few feet off the ground. I noticed that it's facing towards the sun. Yes, so they, were, they must have used just they were, daylight. They were very far sighted in those days. They chose the natural daylight as we see it now. Yeah. 